We are. <laughs> Gentlemen, that is actually very close to what her hair is actually like right there. Oh. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I do have those glasses now. You do you kind of, yes. Look, again, even as Weird Al Yankovic, what is the on-brand thing for Joe? Just so pleased with herself. So this title, she just wrote a great, great parody. I would say that Al Yankovic, his name doesn't really roll off the tongue, but mine rolls even less. Yeah, that's so true. <laughs> oh, man. You know what? I... I look pretty good with the mustache. It looks more dirty Sanchez than Munch the mustache. I gotta tell you. A little bit of hair. Yeah, that is rough stuff. Into it. Well, and I've always thought, I don't even think this is such a bold statement. You know, he is notoriously a teetotaler. Teetotaler? I never, yeah, I never, no drugs, alcohol, or anything like that. And to look at him is to see what a good choice that is. I mean, the man does not look 61. He stopped aging when he was, like, 20. His hair is beautiful. Has he ever had short hair? Well, he's had, like, a, a more fro than what it is now, which is just very long. Yeah. You were sort of playing Al in his later years right there mm. in that particular scene. And, of course, the reason that we have that graphic is, and, you know, if I were to ever describe this show to anyone in a nutshell, it would be that, oh, one time I had a dream that Joanne saying a song that was a parody of Sheryl Crow's All I Want to Do, but it was about her taking a dump. And then after hearing that, Joe goes and does exactly that. Ladies eat, and gentlemen, this I is why she has to replace Harry take Potter. A poo. <laughs> I got a feeling I gotta go number two. All I want to do is take a poo. I got a feeling I'm gonna drop a deuce. All I it's just, I'll always remember those lyrics. I think you're done, Harry Potter. That was all the auditioning this little scamp needed. You're, you're gone, wizard. Well, you're a wizard, it's Harry. time for a new parody artist, if, we've, if we're learning anything from this. And it's about time women take back the parody night. Thank you. When it comes you to this genre. You a great parody. Now, Bobby and Steve might remember this. This was a little past your time, Bill. But remember when Eminem called out Christina Aguilera for sleeping with Fred Durst or whatever. That was in his lyrics of one of his raps. Well, Ooh, then no, Christina don't. Aguilera did a parody of his song. I don't know if you'd call it a parody, but like it was meant to be a diss more than funny. Right. And she redid all the lyrics to his song to just diss him. I have and zero I memory of it. I can't remember the lyrics now, but I remembered, I memorized all of it as a girl. I have no memory of this. How do I not? This is something I would remember. I couldn't tell you my phone number, but I would remember this. Please shut up, yeah. Please shut up. We're gonna have a problem Y'all act like you've never heard a white person before. His rhymes are a poor punk kid trying to be hardcore. But Marshall Mathis is back worse than before. Making a snore, whining in the microphone. It's return of the, oh wait, no way. You're a fool. You didn't pay money for this CD, did you? And Dr. Dre did. <laughs> Everything, you idiot, without Dre's beat bed, you're as good as dead. The world's had enough of Eminem. Diggy, diggy, even his girlfriend's cheating on him. Look at him, walking around, living off Dre, acting so cool, but he's really kind of weak, though. Little twit wow. blasts me on his new CD. Why? Because I turned him down for a date. Hee <laughs> hee. Ask for the question of who came first. Was it Carson Daly or was it Fred Durst? I'm sorry, Slim, but this is gonna hurt. They both came closer than you ever will, jerk. Your song is on my nerves. Your song is on my nerves. You're kind of lucky because you got more fame than you deserve. That is the message that I deliver to little kids. You can become famous and never know what talent is. Of course they're gonna like you. Of course they do. You're like a cartoon version of Ricky Schroeder on Silver Spoons. You ain't nothing but a product. Packaged to be bought up. You know a year from now you won't be thought of. So you write about dead animals and cannibals and Someday you'll stop dating dogs and date higher men. And there's a million women just like me that think like me that all can see that Slim Shady is a just a boy dealing with puberty. So if you this. agree, scream loud to you me. You're Slim Shady, you're sure the real Shady. You sound like Peter like Brady, you get quite irritating. So won't the Surprise, it was me the whole time. No. Um, <laughs> I have no memory of that. So like little me in like sixth or seventh grade who loved Christina was like, yes, you go girl. <laughs> <laughs> Probably didn't get half the references she was and talking you'll about. Stop eating dogs and date higher mammals. I remember that lyric. <laughs> it was so good. Well, Steve, does Staten Island look at Christina Aguilera as the uh, pri their pride and joy? 
Do they hate her? How does Staten Island feel about the, their, their kin? Not really. Nobody really talks about it. <laughs> Nobody did. Let me ask you this. Because she didn't really... I mean, I don't remember her really bragging about being from Staten Island. Yeah, I, I was going to say, I don't remember her being from there. Yeah. Oh, I do. I it's remember kind of her talking about that, it. Like, you found out about her, but she wasn't, like, broadcasting it. Right. Well, all right. If they had. You know what? She was on Mickey Mouse Club so early on that she didn't really grow up She's in. She's an Staten Orlando Island. girl. Yeah. yeah. Uh, then, well, then, all right, let me ask you this if they had to choose Pete Davidson or Christine Aguilera. Ugh. <laughs> Christina, I, yeah, devil's bargain. That. Yeah, <laughs> uh, actually, you kind of gave your answer with the ugh. 